This is a film by Blood Cancer UK, with the UK's specialist blood cancer charity. You'll be hearing from experts and people like me who know what it's like to have blood cancer. Blood cancer is a type of cancer which affects your blood cells. So your body is made up of trillions of cells of all different types. So your liver is made up of liver cells, your heart is made up of heart cells, and your blood is made up of blood cells. There are three main types of blood cells. There's white blood cells which help fight infection, red blood cells which carry oxygen around every part of your body, and platelets which help your blood to clot if you have a cut or a bruise. Cells in your body are constantly dying and being replaced. This is part of how the body grows and repairs itself. Now, sometimes in that process, things can go wrong. Cells might not die when they should, or they might divide and grow too quickly. And this is what we call blood cancer. The main types of blood cancer are leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, myelodysplastic syndromes, and myeloproliferative neoplasms. There are over a hundred different types of blood cancer and they are all treated differently depending on the individual. I've got a type of blood cancer called chronic lymphocytic leukaemia or otherwise known as CLL. I live with a blood cancer called chronic myeloid leukaemia and I've been living with that for 10 years now. My son was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukaemia in 2015 when he was two. So I have Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, which is a chronic type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I was diagnosed with uh, adult acute lymphoblastic leukaemia, uh, otherwise known as ALL. So I was diagnosed with blood cancer Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, stage 2B, um, when I was 15, so about 13 years ago now. Some types of blood cancer are acute which means they develop quickly and need stronger types of treatment. Other types of blood cancer are more chronic, which means they take longer to develop. On average, 110 people are diagnosed with blood cancer in the UK every day. That's about 40,000 people a year. It's the fifth most common cancer in the UK, and there are currently 280,000 people living with or in remission from blood cancer. There are many possible symptoms of blood cancer and they vary depending on the type of blood cancer. But the most common symptoms are unexplained bruising or bleeding, pain in your bones, joints or tummy area, frequent infections, tiredness that doesn't improve with rest or sleep, unexplained fever, unexplained rash, unexplained weight loss, shortness of breath, paleness or pallor, drenching night sweats, lumps or swelling. Some symptoms like bruising, rashes and pallor can look different on different skin tones. You can find out how to spot these on the Blood Cancer UK website. The biggest symptom that, that kept bothering me the most was this uh, cough, cold, infection that I just couldn't get rid of. And it was only retrospectively after the diagnosis that I realised the, the other symptoms that I just put down to getting older. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms and are worried about blood cancer, please visit your GP. There are many different types of treatment for blood cancer and many more are being developed all of the time. In some types of blood cancer, the aim of the treatment is to get you into remission. That means there is no sign of the blood cancer or that it is of such a low level it is not causing you any problems. Some people stay in remission and can consider themselves cured but some other people may need further treatment. For some people, treatment aims to control the condition and allow them to live with their blood cancer and have a good quality of life. Sometimes for people with slow growing or chronic blood cancers, they don't need treatment straight away. 
They will be managed by active monitoring or watch and wait by their healthcare teams. Some people are on active monitoring for many years. So my treatment started pretty much immediately. I was diagnosed on a Friday night and by the Monday morning I'd started on IV chemotherapy. Um, so it was quite a fast moving one just because of the situation of where my um, masses were. One of them was around a windpipe so they kind of had to act quite quickly. With chronic myeloid leukaemia it's ongoing. So I take a, a daily tablet each morning. It's a targeted therapy. It's called a tyrokinase inhibitor. So it keeps everything under control, but it doesn't cure it. My advice would be that if you have any concerns about your treatment, that, that you ask and you get help, because it might not be normal, or it might be normal, or there might be things that they can do to help. We still don't fully understand what causes blood cancer. We know that blood cancer starts with a problem in the genes or DNA, but we don't know exactly why this happens. So unlike with some other types of cancer, we know that lifestyle factors don't play a big role in blood cancers. In addition, you can't catch blood cancer or pass it on to someone else. In fact, the biggest risk factor for blood cancers is age. So simply speaking, the older you are, the more likely you are to develop a blood cancer. So I didn't know why I got cancer. It was a question I asked my doctor a lot and they didn't really have an answer for. And we were told that it was nothing that we did um, or didn't do and that it was just completely random and that we were just unlucky. My brother doesn't have it, my parents didn't have it. He said it was just a freak of nature. If you are diagnosed with a blood cancer, your prognosis and outlook is individual to you. Things that can contribute to this can be your type of blood cancer, how you respond to the treatment, your age, your well-being, and how early your blood cancer was detected. The best people to speak to about your prognosis will be your treatment team. For many people with blood cancer, the treatments given can cure the disease, and for others, these treatments can manage the disease so well that they can live a good quality of life. As research leads to new treatments, more and more people are surviving blood cancer. In terms of my prognosis, we hope that I'm going to continue as I am for a very long time, but I also have the security that my cancer is slow growing and that I'm getting checked every eight weeks. So if things do start to change, it will be picked up really quickly. I know I'm 75, but I still feel quite young at heart and hopefully I'm going to carry on swimming, going on holidays and doing all the things that I enjoy. It was clear from the start that uh, the chances for me were not brilliant. Um, I was told the first time around when I was first diagnosed that I had a 40% chance of survival. Uh, so odds were against me. I was on a clinical trial that wouldn't have been available the five years you know, uh, before, eight years before when I was first diagnosed. And um, so I've seen, I mean, I'm, I'm living proof of how research makes a difference and how things are getting better and more people are surviving. At Blood Cancer UK, we're here to support everyone affected by blood cancer. If you have any questions about your diagnosis or just want to talk, our support line is here for you. To talk to other people affected by blood cancer, join our online community forum. <laughs>